This tutorial looks at copper, how it's extracted from its ore and how it's purified by electrolysis. And then also looks at alloys, some common alloys and their properties. Most copper isn't found as copper in the ground, it's found combined with other elements in what are called ores. Ores are rocks containing metal compounds. And one such ore is malachite or copper carbonate as shown here. In order to extract copper from this ore we have to go through two stages. The first stage is to roast the ore and this breaks down the copper carbonate into copper oxide and carbon dioxide. This is an example of thermal decomposition. The second stage is to heat this copper oxide with carbon. Carbon is what's called a reducing agent. It causes the copper oxide to be reduced. Reduction here is the loss of oxygen atoms. So here, the copper oxide reacts with the carbon to form copper and carbon dioxide. However, copper made by this reduction process isn't pure enough in order to be used for, for example, electrical cables. So the copper has to be purified by a method called electrolysis. You need to be able to label the apparatus needed to purify copper by electrolysis. This diagram taken from BBC Bite Size shows the apparatus for the purification of copper by electrolysis. Here at the top we have the cell or battery. It might be called a power supply. And it's got a positive and a negative end. The positive electrode is called the anode. The anode here is made out of impure copper. The negative electrode is called the cathode. This is made out of a piece of pure copper. Electrolysis occurs using a solution which contains copper sulfate. This solution is called the electrolyte. Finally we have a sludge, an anode sludge here, which is made out of all the parts of that impure anode that don't dissolve into the solution. Essentially, although this is mainly for high level only, the impure copper anode dissolves slowly into the copper sulfate solution and the copper ions which are made deposit onto the negative cathode to make more pure copper. In this way, 99.9% .9 pure copper is made. Although a lot of copper is made from its ore, much of the copper that we use in Britain is recycled copper. Recycling has the advantage that it uses less energy than smelting new copper and we don't need to mine so much copper ore so copper ore isn't wasted. It also means that copper which has been already used and would otherwise be put into landfill can be used to make more copper items. One of the disadvantages of recycling copper is that the copper item might have other metals attached to it and these mean that when it's melted down it will make impure copper which still has to be purified in order for it to be used for example for electrical cables. The reason why copper needs to be so pure is that one of the major uses of copper is in electrical wiring. Electrical wiring must have very little resistance and the impurities in the copper cause resistance. This causes a heating effect in the wire which is dangerous. So all of the impurities must be removed by electrolysis. Here's a list of metals which one is the odd one out. Well the odd one out here would have to be brass because all of the other metals are pure elements whereas brass is a mixture of metals. It's an alloy. 
You need to know what alloys are and recognise the name of some common alloys. And for three of the alloys, you need to know an important large-scale use and why those alloys are used. What are the properties that make them so useful for those particular tasks? An alloy is simply a mixture containing one or more metals which are melted together to make a new metal. Alloys aren't chemical elements, so they don't have chemical symbols. Here are the names of some common alloys that you need to be able to recognise. You need to know that amalgam, which is an alloy of mercury and silver, is used in tooth fillings. Brass, which is an alloy of copper and zinc, is used, for example, for musical instruments, coins or door knockers, whereas solder, which is an alloy of lead and tin is used in electrical joints to join, for example, components onto electrical circuit boards. Two other alloys you need to be aware of are bronze and steel, although you don't necessarily need to know the uses of these or the metals in them. An exam question you get about alloys might have a table of properties, for example hardness, whether they are hard or soft on a scale of say 1 to 10. Their density, which means how heavy they are for their size, whether they have a low density like um, aluminium would have a low density, or a high density like lead would have a high density, what their boiling point is, and for example their strength or weakness. What you do need to know is that alloys have got better properties than the metals from which they're made. For example, dental amalgam made from mercury and silver sets into a very hard mass after a period of time so it doesn't wear down in the mouth. Solder has to have a very low melting point. In fact its melting point is lower than either lead or tin from which it's made.